So guys, today I will present top 10 statistical mistakes made by data scientists uh, that you found on ginnuggets.com. Okay, let's start. Uh, number one, not fully understanding the objective function. And data scientists want to build the best model, but beauty is in the eye of the be of the beholder. If you don't know what a goal and objective function is and how it behaves, it is unlikely you will be able to build the best model. And find the objective may not even be a mathematical function, but perhaps improving a business metric. And solutions. Most Kaggle winners spend a lot of time understanding the objective function and how the data and model are related to the objective function. If you are for optimizing a business metric, map it on appropriate mathematical objective function. An example, uh, F1 score is typically used to access uh, classification models. Uh, to, uh, we only build a classification model whose success depends on the percents of occurrences it was right. The F1 score was misleading because it shows the model was correct, let's say about 60% of the time, whereas in fact it was correct only a 40% of the time. And <coughs> number two, not having a hypothesis on why some, something should work. And commonly data scientists want to build models that hurt extra boost and random forest for the best, so let's use those. They will read about deep learning, maybe that will be improved results further. They threw models at a problem without having looked at the data and without having formed a hypothesis which model is the most likely to, uh, to best capture the features of the data. It makes explaining your work really really hard to because you are just randomly drawing models at, at data and solution look at the data understand its characteristic and form hypothesis which model is likely to best capture those characteristics and example without running any models by just plotting this sample data you can al already have a strong view that x1 is li linearly related with I and X2 doesn't have much of a relationship with I. Number three, not looking at the data before interpreting results. Another problem with not looking at the data is that your results can be he heavily driven by outliers or other artef artifacts. This is especially true for models that minimize square sums. Even without outliers, you can have problems with imbalanced datasets, clipped or missing values, and all sorts of others where weird artifacts of real-life data that you didn't see in the classroom. Solution: It is so important. It's worth repeating. Look at the data. Understand how the nature of the data is impacting model results. An example. With outliers, x1 slope changed from 0.9 to let's say 0.375. Number four, not having a NA baseline model. Modern machine learning libraries almost make it too easy. Just change a line of code and you can run a new model. And another uh, error metrics are decreasing. Weak parameters, great error metrics are decreasing further. With all the models' fi fanciness, you can forget the dumb way of forecasting data. And without that naive benchmark, you don't have a good absolute comparison for how good your models are. They may all be bad in absolute terms. And solution What is the dumbest way you can predict value? Build a model using the last known value the rolling mean of some constant, for example, zero. Compare your model performance against a zero intelligent forecast monkey. And example, with this time series data, model one might be better than model two with a mean square error of 0.21 and 0.43 respectively. But wait, by just taking the last no value, the mean square error drops to 0.003 Incorrect out sample testing 
this is the one of that could uh, derail your carrier. The model you built looked great in the research and development, but performs horrible in production. The model you said you said will do wonders, is causing really bad business outcomes, potentially costing the company money. It is so important. All the remaining mistakes are the last on one focus on it. Solution. Make sure you are run your model in realistic old sample conditions and understand when it will be performed well and when it doesn't. And example, make sure you are run your model in realistic old sample conditions and understand when it will be performed well and when it doesn't. Number six, incorrect out sample testing, applying preprocessing to full dataset. Uh, you probably know that powerful machine learning models can can over overtrain. Over overtraining means it performs well in sample but badly out sample. So you need to be aware of having training data leak into test set into test data. If you are not careful for any time you do feature engineering or cross validation, train data can creep into test data and inflate model performance. Solution. Make sure you have a true test set free of any leakage from training set. Especially be uh, beware of any time dependent relationship that could occur in production use. An example. Uh, this happens a lot. Uh, Preprocessing is applied to full dataset before. It is split into train and test, meaning you do not have a true test set. Preprocessing need to be applied separately after data is split into train and test set to make it a true test set. The mean square error between the two methods uh, in this case is not all the difference because the distributional properties between train and test are not that different, but that might not always be the case. Number seven, incorrect out sample testing, cross sectional data and panel data. You were taught cross validation is all you need. SQLN even provides you some nice convenience functions so you think you have checked all the boxes. But most cross validation methods do random sampling so you might end up with training data in your test set which inflate performance. And solution, Gener uh, generate tests data such that it accurately reflects data on which you would make prediction in live production use. Especially with time series and panel data you likely will have to generate custom cross validation data or do roll forward testing. Example, here we have panel data for two different en entities, for example companies, which are cross-sectionally uh, quite correlated. If you randomly split data you make accurate prediction using data you did not actually have available during test, overstating model performance. You think you avoided mistake uh, in number 5 uh, error in this video by using cross validation and found the random forest perform a lot better than linear regression in cross validation. But running a roll forward out sample test which prevent future data from leaking in the test, it performs a lot of ports again. And random forest means square, mean square error goes from 0 0.047 to 0 0.211, higher than a linear regression. And error number H, not considering which data is available at a point decision. When you run when you run model in production and get uh, fed with data that is available when you run uh, when you run the model, that data might be different than what you assume to be available in training. For example, the data might be published with delay, so by the time you run the model, uh, uh, our inputs have changed and you are making prediction with wrong data, or your true I variable is incorrect. Solution: uh, Do a rolling out sample forward test. If you had, if you had used this model in production, what would my training data look like? For example, what data do you have to make prediction? That's training data used to make a true out sample protection test. Furthermore, think about if you 
impacted on the prediction, what results would that generate at the point of decision? Uh, and error number nine, subtle overtraining. The more time you spend on a data set, the more likely you are to overtrain it. Uh, you keep tinkering with features and optimizing model parameters. You use cross validation, so everything must be good. Solution. After you have finished building a model, try to find another version of datasets that can be uh, surrogate for a true our sample dataset. If you are a manager, deliberately withhold data so that it does not get used for training. And example, applying the model that we were training on dataset 1 to dataset 2 shows the mean square error more than doubled. Are they so acceptable? This is a judgment call, but your result from uh, error number four is not having an A baseline model might help you de to de decide. And error number 10 need more data fallacy. Often, the best way to get started analyzing data is by working on a representative sample of the data. That allows you, uh, you to familiarize yourself with the data and build the data pipeline without waiting for data processing and model training. But data scientist seems not to like that. More data is better. Solution Start working with a small representative sample and see if you can get something useful out of it. Give it back to the end user. Can they use it? Does it solve a real pain point? If not, the problem is likely not because you have too little data but with your approach. And thanks for watching and see you on the next video.